IDF forces killed three more children last night during the ground offensive invasion of Gaza, which was cheered on by watching Israelis on rooftops who hollered and celebrated as the bombs fell, leading CNN journalist Diana Magne to tweet, quote, Israelis on hill above Sederot cheer as bombs land on Gaza, threatened to destroy our car if I said a word wrong, scum. The tweet was deleted about 20 minutes later. But why shouldn't the Israelis be proud of the terror that the Zionist state is raining down on Palestinians? After all, Israel is only defending itself, right? I mean, those four boys slaughtered on the beach playing football yesterday. Another legitimate act of self-defense. This is the geopolitical equivalent of a small child running up, kicking you in the balls, and then you responding by blowing the kid's brains out. Would that be a legitimate form of self-defense? How do you think that that would fly in court? But hey, you know, even if you think that butchering kids is a legitimate form of self-defense, can we at least refrain from applauding, cheering, and celebrating the murder of children? And first of all, just to point out, I don't have a dog in this fight. I've made numerous videos, written probably a hundred or more articles over the past few years, criticizing militant Islam. So I'm not a fan of militant Islam or Hamas in any way. And I don't blame Israel every time somebody slips on a banana peel. I'm not obsessed with blaming Jews for every problem in the world, as many people are. So you understand it's difficult. We at InfoWars constantly get flack for not blaming everything on Israel. And then when Israel does commit war crimes, as it's doing in Gaza at the moment, we get flack from the Christian fundamentalists who equate criticism of Israel to some kind of blasphemy against God. So let's get into it. Are Israel's airstrikes in response to Hamas's rocket attacks a legitimate form of self-defense? Is it justified? To put this into context, Hamas's rockets since 2001, 13 years ago, have killed a total of 28 Israelis. Just in the past week alone, Israeli airstrikes on Gaza have killed, at time of making this video, 227 Palestinians, most of them innocent people, and around half of them women and children. So in just the past week alone, Israel has killed 10 times the amount of Palestinians in one week in comparison to Hamas rocket attacks for the previous 13 years since 2001. Is that a proportionate response? Is that justified vengeance? Is that a legitimate degree of self-defense? That's not to downplay the significance of the death of 28 Israelis. But I mean, just go and look at the images, go and read the reports. Look at the difference between the aftermath of the deadly Hamas rocket attacks in comparison to the actual war crimes that Israel is now committing on a daily basis. Take a look at yesterday's incident. Four Palestinian children playing football on a beach in what looks like deliberate targeting by an Israeli gunboat. They were all slaughtered. This is why I say deliberate. Look at these images. This is the target, which was basically some where some fishermen keep their nets, that deadly terrorist target which Israel initially took out yesterday. Here you see the four children who are on the beach playing football, desperately running away, trying to escape from the site of this bombing. Moments later, they are targeted by an Israeli gunboat and slaughtered in cold blood. So again, is this a legitimate form of defense for Israel? Is this proportionate or is this indiscriminate? You know, were there... Hamas, terrorist rockets and insurgents hiding on the beach. Maybe they were buried beneath the sand. I mean, who knows what justification they're going to come up with next in order to legitimize the murder of these four young children. Look at these tweets from Israelis and Israeli supporters moments after it was announced that these four children had been brutally slaughtered. 
I hope to hear news like this every day. Luckily they died, otherwise they would grow up to become martyrs. That's it, only four? What a shame. Let them die, fewer garbage Hamas. We're talking about four kids on a beach playing football, for God's sake. Just the lack of humanity amongst these zealous, delusory Israel supporters is just shocking, absolutely shocking. And it serves to remind us of this clip from 2009, from the, one of the previous bombardments of Gaza, where this woman, Karen Levy, a war tourist, apparently, in the description, went to see the bombs dropping on Gaza from a distance, expressed her desire to see the entire city and its 1.6 million population wiped off the map, ethnically cleansed, because, quote, I'm a little bit fascist. But don't you think you'll get the worse by bombing them? No, I think that's the only solution. I think, bomb. I think they should just clear off all the city. <sighs> just take it off the ground. Yes, I'm a little bit fascist. Here's another response to the killing of the four boys on the beach. LOL at slaughters, Israel is under attack and fighting back. How rude of them. That's right, how rude of those boys to dare play football on a beach in defiance of Israel's brave defence against innocent little kids. They had to be slaughtered. It was their own fault. Or maybe it was the fault of their parents. I mean, God forbid we would actually blame the Israeli gunboat commanders that fired the shells that killed them. Because again, Israel has a right to defend itself against four children on a beach playing football. Or maybe it was these boys' fault for failing to heed Israel's order to evacuate Gaza, because they've really got a lot of options in terms of getting out of the way of these falling bombs. Evacuate to where? <laughs> Have you seen Gaza? It's this bit, Israel blocked this border, Egypt blocked this border, were they supposed to swim for it? <laughs> but you know, perhaps the Palestinians should be more grateful for the Israelis' generous tactic of warning them in advance of an airstrike by dropping a smaller bomb on their homes. How very gracious of them. But again, it's not Israel's fault for the fact that they're bombing and maiming children. It's Hamas's fault, it's the Palestinians' fault, because of course, they choose to situate their rockets, which of course is the real target for Israel's attack, they would never target innocent civilians. They choose to situate the rockets amongst residential homes, hospitals, and so on. Well again, where else are they supposed to live? Where are they supposed to put their hospitals? I mean, look at the size of the Gaza Strip. It's around twice as large as the District of Columbia, DC, and yet it has over three times DC's population. Look at this map of Palestinian loss of land since 1946. From this to this. And there's the Gaza Strip. Where else are they supposed to put their homes when half of them are being bulldozed anyway by Israel? Where are they supposed to put their hospitals if not in the vicinity of somewhere where these Hamas rockets these weak, pathetic rockets that have killed one-tenth the amount of people in the last 13 years that Israel has killed in the last week. Where else are they supposed to put them? Where else are they supposed to live? Where else are they supposed to have their hospitals? And again, look at the figures over the past week. 228 Palestinians at the time of making this video killed. Over 1,800 injured. In comparison, one Israeli fatality, four Israelis seriously injured. 228 to one, and 1,800 to four. Is this a legitimate defense of Israeli interests? Is this justified? Is this proportionate? Is this a manifestation of Israel having a right to defend itself? You cannot justify the bombing of residential areas, the slaughtering of children, as justifiable as Israel has a right to defend itself. This is a war crime. It's clearly a war crime. You should be ashamed of yourself 
if you try to justify it by claiming Hamas's pathetic rockets, which again have killed one tenth of the amount of Israelis, as Israel has killed Palestinians just in the past week alone, over 13 years, if you think that that is a justified response for Israel to be conducting these airstrikes. Funded in part, of course, by the US taxpayer, $4 billion a year in foreign aid to Israel. And it has nothing to do with, quote, Israel's right to defend itself. Because as Israeli Interior Minister Eli Yishai said back in 2012 during the last bombardment of Gaza, quote, the goal of the operation is to send Gaza back to the Middle Ages. And the only way you can do that, of course, is by committing war crimes, by destroying civilian infrastructure, by killing people in their hundreds and thousands. This has nothing to do with self-defence. This is about the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians who, of course, have been herded into a, basically a concentration camp, the Gaza Strip. They have to live their lives with checkpoints surrounding them on a daily basis, abuse by IDF troops, no way out, and now being bombarded again by Israeli airstrikes targeting civilian infrastructure and children. This has nothing to do with, quote, Israel's right to defend itself. All the evidence clearly proves that it's a war crime, that it's barbarous, and it has to stop now. This is Paul Joseph Watson reporting for Infowars.com.